Hey guys, what's up? This video is brought to you by Linode. If you guys are looking to get into web hosting, I've been using Linode for all my websites for the last eight years. They have a new product called Linode Object Storage that you guys might want to take a look at. They actually have free storage all the way until May 31st of this year, 2020. Uh, this is my own personal Linode account. You can see that I'm eligible for this upgrade and I can just simply add a bucket, uh, pick a region that I want it to run out of. And there's regions all over the, the world, by the way. So if you guys need a lot of data storage for things like machine learning or artificial intelligence projects, make sure you give that a look. There's also a $20 discount in the link below. All right, guys, good evening. So this video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 reasons to use Django. And I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world with coronavirus, all this stuff, and I'm not going to do a video on that. I'm just kind of going back to what I do. I'd like to make some more content, especially while I'm isolated and quarantined. So in this video, I'm just throwing together the top 10 reasons why I choose Django time and time again for my entire 10 years of development. And for all of you that don't know, Django is a web framework. So just like other web frameworks out there like Node and Express or ASP.NET with C Sharp, Django is Python's like largest web framework. So let's go ahead and talk about the top 10 reasons why you would want to use it for your next project. All right, so number one, first and foremost, it's free. Back in the older days before open source software really took off with the web frameworks like Ruby on Rails and Django, you did have a lot of vendor lock-in. I would say things with like .NET were vendor lock-in. You'd have to pay license fees for the uh, integrated development environments for your team to build code. Also license fees for like SQL Server. And there's also a lot of other frameworks out there that do not have free licenses with them, like things like Qt and, and other projects that there's a lot of uh, like, what if with my situation, do I have to pay license fees and all this other stuff? So that can be really difficult to deal with. I think when you're trying to build a business or a product, it's best to use something that's completely free and Django is completely free to use. All right, number two, it's open source and cross-platform. Open source, meaning that all the code is available on GitHub. There's 1,872 contributors. And if you were to look through this entire list, I'm even in there somewhere like, um, I've done at least one push to the Django project. So this is like a humongous community that backs this project, more so than a lot of other projects that you'll find on GitHub that are mainly like one or two guys or one or two developers. With Django, it's literally hundreds and then overall, you know, nearly 2,000 contributors. In addition to that, it's also cross-platform. So this code base will run just fine on Windows, Mac, or Linux, and that's also something that a lot of projects cannot say the same. You'll find... So many projects out there and they only run on Linux uh, or they'll run on Linux and Mac commonly and not on Windows. So and then there's stuff that runs on Windows and nothing else. All right, number three, Django is just Python code. So Python being one of the most popular languages out there, Python itself is also cross-platform and open source, which also is one of the reasons why Django is as well. And with Python, like, it's a great first language. It's one of the ones that I recommend. It's actually one of the ones that colleges are now using the most. It used to be Java, but now it's Python. Python is also the leader in like data science machine learning. So a lot of people really love Python, like going back even way before the machine learning days or even before Django. In fact, Google's search engine was originally written with Python uh, as well. So Python goes back decades now, and it's a pretty stable language. So if we go and we look at the actual Django source code, you can see like all this core stuff. This is like the core of, of Django. Here's the exceptions file, exceptions.py. And you can see this is all just simply Python code. So if you know Python, then you know Django, and you could even contribute to either one of them uh, because they're open source projects. However, if you're going to contribute to Python, you're going to be writing some C, uh, some C code. All right, so number four, Django uses the model view controller architecture, which goes back, I believe, to small talk days back in the 1970s. Uh, but it got reintroduced into web development. Ruby on Rails really made that a big thing. And then eventually, like ASP.NET went to MVC.NET. And pretty much all the web frameworks are following this MVC model. You also have different uh, variations of that, like model, view, view model. So you hear about MVVM. Uh, there's two Vs in there, MVVM. So the interesting thing is that under normal MVC patterns, that you have model, which is your, your database schema. It's all your different 
uh, relational tables like laid out however many tables you need and what uh, what the data elements are and how they all interact with each other. That's all done in your model. And then your view is considered like your template engine. So React is basically a modern day view that is run with JavaScript. So that is considered to be the view side of things, but the view is any sort of template engine. And then your controller is your actual, uh, it's, your, it's your actual logic uh, in many cases, like for authentication, authorization, API calls, determining you know whether or not somebody has access to look at a certain page and all that stuff is done in the controller. But separating, separating out all these huge concerns seems kind of obvious in hindsight, but it really changed web development. So for it seems like almost uh, we're going on nearly two decades now, at least a decade and a half that we've been using the MVC pattern, and that's not really going away. So uh, the good thing about Django is that it also implements that same pattern. Now, the one caveat with that, though, this is a Django application here. It's just a localized thing that I was doing for a tutorial that I have available on my CodeHawk site if you guys are interested in learning Django. But there is the, uh, the actual main module here. And what we have is we have templates. So like here's your actual index.html. So Django is actually deciphering all this stuff. I can put actual Django code inside of here using the template language that comes built in. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. But the, the, uh, the thing I want to mention is that instead of MVC for model view controller, Django actually uses something called a model view template. So your views is where all your logic is. Your templates is where the presentation is. And then your models.py uh, file for individual uh, sections of, of your code base, you know, your different database uh, schema is all going to be done inside your models. So that still follows the same convention. So while Django is like slightly different than MVC from the, I, I think the, the traditional definition of it, it still follows an MVC pattern. All right, so number five, and this is actually one of the bigger reasons to use a, a tried and true, well-tested framework like Django is because it's secure. It actually has built-in protection for common website hacks, you know, SQL injection, cross-site forgery protection, cross-site scripting. It even has like, with such an active community, it has emergency releases sometimes when certain security issues are found out about. And those things are imperative. Like if you're trying to start some small business and you rely on your code to work, having an entire team of developers that are looking at the core of your framework and reporting issues on that is, I think, a very good thing. I mean, I've talked to some programmers that think it's a bad thing because then, you know, like if somebody knows that there, there's an exploitable bug on Django, then all Django sites are going to be attacked. However, even if you didn't use your own web framework and the same situation occurred, the, the odds are you're probably not even going to spot the bug before it completely screws you over. All right, so number six is going to be for the user authentication and authorization that comes built in out of the box with Django. You can extend it fairly easily, even for beginner developers, to suit your own needs. But the needs... Um, for most people are satisfied out of the box. So for instance, most of the time when you're registering a new user to your site, you need their username, their email, maybe a phone number or something. Sometimes you might want to require the address. Sometimes you might want to have like an entire profile system like with Stack Overflow. It's really up to you, but Django provides most of the necessities that you're going to need for that user profile uh, right out of the box. And then when it comes to, okay, this particular user belongs to this specific group and um, you know just grouping different sections of, of authorization within your site it, those are things that it would take you a lot of time to write and when I compare it to something like node and express there is no built-in authentication so it's easy to get something up and running in node and express but then as soon as you need like an entire uh, you know authorization authentication it's like okay you need to use like passport or some other third-party service nowadays it's like you use firebase or something and it, abstract all that away from your site. But those are all different points of failure and they're also different points of uh, additional cost to you as a company or a small business or, or just a website owner that's trying to get your stuff out there. So Django's stuff working, batteries included, it works perfectly fine for me. In fact, it works so good. This is really one of the bigger reasons why I use it uh, in projects going forward uh, and up till now. Uh, even though I have experience with Node and .NET and all these other places. 
All right, so number seven is going to be because of Django's built-in admin UI. And similar to how we have authentication and authorization, like that's already built into this admin UI. And these are just some screenshots that are on Google here. So if you look at some of these examples, there's all kinds of different ways that you can represent your data from within the admin. And an example of that in the code base, like in here, I have this admin.py and I'm registering this band module, which is part of this MVC pattern. So this is my model of band and bands always have like a title, origin, image, and a bio. And there's some additional work here that I'm not going to explain in this video. But the bottom line is that like it's very modular based with Django development and with the admin, it just, it comes in so much, uh, it just, it, it comes in handy very often. It also has a built-in web server. So for instance, if I want to run my manage, in fact, I can just say manage.py run server has a built-in web server for development. And that doesn't seem like a big deal, but it seemed like when Django was first coming out, like the, the fact that it had the built-in developer, uh, the server, so you can make Ajax calls and all that stuff. The, there's a lot of uh, websites that like when you're trying to get into like React or Angular and all this stuff, and you want to make Ajax calls and you can't do that because you don't have a server listening. Uh, but Django's built-in server has always been there. It's been there since the start. So here this uh, this website spin up on my localhost address. And if I go here, this is the bootstrap template I'm using. If I go over to my forward slash admin, I'm already logged in with a guy named admin. But you can see all my different users here. So here's my two different users. And I have this band here. There's just one band. So this is the data here. But you get this UI working out of the box. And it just saves a ton of time whenever you have a content-based website, which is what most websites are. All right, so number eight is going to be the object relational mapper. And what that is is it's a bunch of Python code that writes SQL for you. SQL is a very difficult language. If you're a SQL expert, you can work in pretty much any field. You're going to be data-driven, obviously. But um, SQL knowledge is really imperative. Well, it's not imperative because we have object relational mappers. But the thing is, is the object relational mappers are abstracting away the normal SQL statements that you would have to learn front and back in order to do normal things that most websites have to do with data. However, with uh, Django, it just uses uh, Python. So like here in this view is here, I'm doing a database query right here and I'm just simply saying get object or return a 404. So it's a built-in uh, helper method from Django shortcuts. And it allows me to query my database in simple Python syntax without having to know all that backend SQL work. All right, so number nine is going to be the template engine. So I mentioned this before when I talked about the MVC pattern. With Django, it's really MVT, so it's model view template. And the templates are the traditional views for MVC. But... I have the ability to use master pages. Like here, this is a master page for code reuse. I'm simply just loading this. I'm defining blocks of content that I can inject into it. I can do if else statements if somebody's authenticated or not. And all of this works out of the box. Now, if I compare it with Node and Express, they give you the option of using Jade, or now it's called Pug, and a couple of other template engines. But it's kind of difficult, I think, to find a good one. I really don't like all these white space templates. I prefer this more of like, a, I suppose this is more mustache or uh, nunjux or whatever is what it's called. I think nunjux, uh, which is a node template engine, which, which it was actually built with uh, Django's template engine in mind. But even if you don't like the default Django template engine, there's another popular one called Jinja 2, which is also very similar to the way Django's template engine works. So there's not a big learning curve between the two, but you can easily plug and play which template engine you want to work with, uh, just like you can with Node and Express. And on that note as well, because you know this is all just client-side code, you can easily obviously render a view, an Angular or React website using Django as a backend. All right, so number 10 is going to be jobs, and Django has a fairly decent amount of jobs. And if you guys have watched this channel in the past, when we compare Python to other languages out there, there's not going to be as many Django jobs as something like Java and Spring or C Sharp and ASP.NET. But you're going to have more Django jobs probably than any other web framework in Python, Flask being the second. 
uh, and possibly more than Django at this point, but they're going to be neck and neck, and then there's really nothing else. So some of the largest websites in the world actually use Python and Django specifically, like Instagram still uses Django. Uh, Discuss, which was an online commenting system that had like up to 8 billion views in a month. Uh, they were using that. Mozilla's using Django. Pinterest was built with Django. Reddit's still using Python. And Pinterest, even though they're not using Django framework anymore, uh, they still do use Python. So there's pl plenty of uh, large websites. And then there's a lot of, uh, I find, a decent amount of like government work, you know, older type stuff. See, Django has a, a track record of being well-documented and also well-supported going into the future. So if you pick a certain version of Django, you can go to the Django community website and it will specifically tell you that the community is dedicated to supporting that particular version of the framework for whatever period of time. And sometimes it's like four to eight years out. All right, guys, so that's my top 10 reasons to learn Django. If you guys are interested in learning Django, I, I recommend this course that I have here, Django for Beginners in 2020. And there's also a 50% discount if you just look at the link in the description tab below on top of any listed price that, that is here. I have other courses available as well. So I think Django is still a good option, even in uh, 2020. There's a lot of newer, shinier frameworks out there. However, it almost seems to me that with all the craziness going on and you know all these new frameworks, and now we're going to have this economic contraction, sometimes getting back to the roots of just, okay, we're dealing with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. What's the best way to do it? What's the quickest way to write it? And, uh, and when you factor in all of that stuff, I think Django is really high on the list of all of the available frameworks out there.